Good evening, my name is Lorraine and welcome to Walking MDR Therapy presentation. Before I start, I want to thank the participants and my fellow pilgrims who consented for me to use their lived experience of Walking MDR images and their stories. And I'd also like to acknowledge Dr. Derek Fargo for his supervision insights and Michael Burns for allowing us to use the EMDR documentary that enabled me to be able to show this presentation and explore walking MDR from the perspective of great EMDR contributors like Shapiro herself, Van der Kolb, Panel, and Korn, Luba, and many others. Walking MDR therapy like EMDR uses the adaptive information processing model and BLS to to reprocess distressing memory which are held within our limbic or reptilian brain or whichever part of our brain it is. And walking MDR uses the feet to activate the eye movements. And eye movements are a natural occurrence when we walk because they control the motor and sensory networks that enable communication between the brain. So walking EMDR, what it does, it augments EMDR treatment because it combines the healing qualities of walking in nature. Walking EMDR works exactly the same way as EMDR. It uses the AIP and bilateral stimulation. However, with walking EMDR, the bilateral stimulation that we use is through the feet. That naturally rouses the eye movement. Another added benefit of walking EMDR is that it encompasses the healing qualities of nature and walking, which helps us clear our distressing memories much quicker and in an enjoyable, relaxing way. And the main key and the main driver is bilateral stimulation between EMDR and also in walking EMDR as this next clip attests. It works so organically the way EMDR works. You're really working with the memory networks, you're working with new information that comes in, you're working with a deeper sense of understanding and knowing. And the therapist's job is just to follow and then wherever it's stuck, ask a question or do something that draws the information from the client. And this is where we work with memory networks, that, that one part of them knows and another part doesn't know. So we're, we're asking questions or doing interventions to help the two parts link up together. And that's a lot of what, what happened. And I am convinced that the bilateral stimulation is part of what helps integrate these networks. AMDR is so adaptable, it can even be adapted for COVID-19 because the virus is less communicable in the wind or in open air. And so what we then do, we do an extensive assessment of fitness and underlying health, health issues. And we also practice safe distancing. It's easy to walk with somebody following you or if you find a path and you just stand a little away from each other and just to be on the safe side wear face mask and protective gloves. The objectives of walking EMDR therapy research was to explore ways to treat PTSD symptoms and it was also a follow-up on literature review on why veterans were unable to access their government provided PTSD treatments and it's also was to destigmatize and make trauma treatments for more accessible and comprehensive. And it's also in response to calls from current trauma research that researchers have to find more insightful, inventive and innovative ways of treating PTSD. And EMDR, sorry, walking EMDR follows directly in Shapiro's footsteps because she discovered EMDR when she was walking. And this was done by the benefits of walking and nature. So walking and nature, uh, it promotes 
empathy. It's less threatening. There's no need for awkward silences. And it deepens, it deepens a therapeutic relationship when you're working with a client. And it's physically liberating and uplifting and it improves your body. Biologically, you feel better when you move because the, the blood is circulating and walking side by side increases trust and empathy. So walking is very beneficial, not just therapeutically, but physically, mentally and psychologically. So why I wanted to do walking EMDR? It's because of my own personal explorations on the Camino. I walk the Camino, I'm a bona fide pilgrim. I use walking to clear my head, to find myself, to ground myself and to de-stress. And I also use it to self-care, motivate myself and set myself goals. And when this happened for me, where I discovered walking EMDR, but I didn't know that I was doing EMDR because I hadn't started on my EMDR path. It was on the Camino Francesa. As you can see, that's my Meseta Camino family. That's the family of that particular Camino. So with every Camino, we find other people you walk with and you have pleasant relationships with. And the Camino Francesa, it runs all the way from France down to the east of Spain. And the Meseta starts from Burgos to Lyon. And obviously I was already a couple of days into my Meseta. And legend says you meet yourself on the Meseta. So when you're walking the Camino, because people walk the Camino for so many reasons, mainly is to just find the blockages. Oh, it's a process. And it's been known and asserted that on the Meseta, that's where you will get your clarity and self-awareness or to move or have a shift in process. And that's where it happened for me. Although I'd been walking the Meseta for a couple of days, so I think I was into day three when I got my um, shift in process, I was getting anxious or impatient actually. It's like, oh, it's not happening. It's not working. There's no insights that I've gained until I met Andre from that particular family. He was taking the picture, so he's not in the picture. So until I met Andre from that Meseta family and it changed my life, he walked in on this particular day. He walked in late and he was limping and I went to him and we we're chatting and I massaged him. At that time, I had no idea who he was. And on the Camino, it doesn't matter who you are. I massaged him. I helped, took care of him. And in the morning before he left, I checked his feet, make sure he was fine. So I was the last one to leave the albergue or the hostel. So I was surprised as I was walking and I met up with him and automatically I stopped and I started walking with him and then my nurturing kicked in and I started taking care of him. And what that did, it just before I was able to process my own dissonance, so it helped me process my dissonance and I think he was the right companion for me on that Camino and he was the shift. He enabled the shift to happen. As I tested in this video, in this video he's talking about, although I don't know if you understand Spanish, but hopefully you'll get a gist of it. He was just talking about walking together and what's happening. Okay, I'm walking with Andre, and um, it's absolutely beautiful. We've just left Castellieri's. And hola. Say hola. Hola. Oh, it's this way. <laughs> hola. Estamos en el Camino de Santiago, en la última etapa que hace hoy Lorraine, y ya volverá a su casa. <laughs> y vamos caminando juntos. Hoy ha sido ella mi ángel de la guarda, porque me ha ayudado <laughs> so what he's talking about is just what I've told you that we're walking together and how I helped him and 
he was grateful that I was there to help him and he was saying that it's my last day I'm leaving and I'm going home the next day and the next video shows the calm before the storm because as we came up we were just taken by the beauty of the mountain and also go oh, am I going to cross that so it's just an amazing so that for me that was the calm before the um, storm in front of us I just started taking a picture because it's absolutely amazing I just fell in love with this place as we came out. What you see in front of us is a mountain that we have to climb in about 10 minutes and it's really high but I know we'll make it, the Camino carries you. It's just incredible. My heart is truly open. One thing I've learnt about the Camino, it's not something that you do once. You do it over and over again. That's the beauty of the Camino. And uh, yeah, wish us luck. So that was the calm before the storm and climbing the mountain was the process and what happened after that. So it got harder and harder for Andre. It was a tough mountain. I made it, but I was struggling, but I was still okay to carry on. And he struggled and I had a pull within myself because I wanted to walk further so I can get to a place where I can get the bus the next morning and go to the airport. But instead of communicating my needs to him, I started falling into my old family patterns and I withdrew and I stopped communicating with him. I didn't take care of myself. But and then I started asking myself, how do I drop myself into these situations? Fortunately for me, what I was doing as I was walking, because as we were walking, I was asking myself, how do I do this? And, you know, what's going on? I was then doing what I now know as self-directed EMDR, using the feet as bilateral stimulation. So what I realized as we walked that I got in my way by not expressing my needs or taking care of myself. Nobody was persecuting me. I put myself in that position. I had muttered myself because of my intergenerational patterns. And I shattered the myth. That walk shattered my myth that I used to think I was perfect. I thrived to be perfect. But I realized that I didn't have to matter myself by meeting other people's needs so with the emdr exploration so once i trained as an emdr therapist i realized what happened to me on the camino and then i was so keen to try it and put it together and emdr i realized actually as i trained that emdr is suitable for walking because shapiro discovered it when she was walking and EMDR is suitable for movement as an even adaptation to it as a Vamitin 3MDR exploration show and it's integrative and it now you can even adapt it for COVID-19. So my explorations of using EMDR with somebody rather than myself knowing what I was doing not by accident <laughs> came on the Camino Portuguese as you can see these are different Caminos I think I've done more than half of them so these are different variations and different Caminos so this one particularly I was on the Camino Portuguese and just about the last third of the leg before finishing and when I walk, when I'm in the Camino, it's like being a doctor in a party. Once people know you're a therapist, everybody wants to come to you. Everybody wants to tell you their problems. So what I then found is that people were coming to me and sharing their stuff. And this particular pilgrim, he was talking about the breakup down of his relationship as we we're walking in the morning. Then when we stopped for coffee, I said to him, oh, I have this new way which I'm learning how to use. Do you mind if I try it with you? I think it might work. Uh, so we, when we stopped for coffee, I took his history, his timeline, identified his most distressing memories. His problems were surprisingly in the past and in the future. 
And his most distressing memory was also surprising because it wasn't the breaking, the breakup of the relationship, but it was of childhood bullying. And his negative self-beliefs maintained his symptoms. He believed he wasn't good enough because of the bullying. He embodied his feelings in his body and mainly in his chest and his negative self-belief was that he wasn't good enough but that shifted and their validity was only three out of seven and he gained a positive cognition that actually he was good enough. So as we walked we used the fetus to stimulate bilateral stimulation and we slowed down. We didn't stop but we just slowed down between sets. I took his suds regularly and they lowered from 9 to 1 and 9, 8 to 2. And walking helps focus his mind because one of the things that he was struggling with was focusing and staying present at work. And he found that time passed quickly for both of us. In three hours we had covered an extra 15 kilometers that we both had in bargain to walk. I found it fun, he found it fun, it was engaging and energising for both of us. And his negative cognitions changed, he realised that he was good enough, he felt optimistic about his future, he realised that his negative self-beliefs had contributed to the breakup. So what I was doing, I was in line with Shapiro and all great thinkers and philosophers. Because, as Nietzsche said, all great thoughts are conceived through walking. Plato himself attests to it because he used to walk and teach and discuss business on the grounds of Lyceum because he knew or he felt that it improved his thoughts. Shapiro herself discovered walking EMD or EMD at that time while she was walking. So there's something to walking and Shapiro herself in this clip attests actually started about 10 years previous, back in, in a, uh, the late 70s. I got cancer and that shifted my attention from English literature, which I was doing at the time, to mind-body. And so I started using my mind and body as, a, li as a, a laboratory, you see, just being observant of what was happening. And, and so I took every workshop I could think of, you know, that type of thing. And then one day I was walking along and I noticed that some disturbing thoughts I was having was suddenly disappearing. And I, when I went to bring them back, they just didn't have a... So Shapiro is talking about how walking and it activated the eye movements and EMDR and then she adapted it for the office but what I've done is readapted back to its original state and I'll tell you about EMDR although I don't want to preach to a kaya because everybody knows what EMDR is and how it works but as we all know EMDR is a groundbreaking trauma treatment which was discovered by Shapiro when she was walking and EMDR treats distressing memories and it integrates other psychotherapeutic models. That's one unique thing about EMDR. You can be a CP CBT therapist, you can be humanistic, you can be psychodynamic and it, it does work and it feeds into other models. And what EMDR does, it uniquely assesses and targets and also reduces PTSD symptoms using an AIP model and it also equips clients with self-soothing abilities especially with when we find the safe space. EMDR uses an AIP model to reprocess maladaptive memories and the AIP uses a natural occurring process which is similar or is REM sleep to reprocess distressing memories that are stuck within all three of our brains and so that they can make new associations and link the new memory or the distressing memory with its other existing or associating memories so that they can see it differently or it will reduce its distress. How trauma affects the brain is that when we have trauma we become very it's like frozen, like how I feel right now with presentation. Um, our fight and flight responses are engaged. 
the brain shuts down and we freeze and we lose the capacity to self-regulate and we can't hold dual attention and Shapiro in this next clip beautifully expresses how we get PTSD or what can cause trauma and so forth and so on it could be a, a, an early humiliation that happened when a person was trying to, to make a speech and someone was making fun of them and that got locked in and that happened in you know in fourth grade or fifth grade or sixth grade and that's really the core of not being able to speak in public. That's really the core of going into a room and feeling agitated. That's really the core of having difficulty with authority figures. And it's and these things are in the brain stored with the emotions and physical sensations and beliefs that we had at the time. And that's what's happening to us all the time. We see somebody, we don't feel good about that person, we don't know why we never met that person before but it's going into a memory network where it's connected to other people that look like that sounded like that and we're getting those immediate experiences having to do with the past what shapiro eloquently expresses is how i feel about presenting online actually any presentation and that's a beautiful way for Shapiro to put it. So how EMDR works, it uses bilateral stimulation to, to rouse the eye movements and the AIP to reprocess those memories by using a standard protocol which teaches clients to self-regulate and install a safe space. And also the standard protocol then takes history, assesses and psychoeducates the clients about EMDR. And then it successively targets and desensitizes before reprocessing the earliest and most distressing memories before it installs and strengthens a positive cognition. And then as a closure, you, you, it scans the body just to see if there's any trauma that's being embodied in the body. And then it evaluates and checks the effective of the the effectiveness of the treatment. So walking EMDR works just like EMDR. So walking EMDR works exactly like EMDR except for the, the variation which is obviously you have to physically prepare and we go walking. So what we do we physically prepare clients for walking and we talk about whether appropriate clothing and we do different assessments so the assessments will be based on walking and they will have an assessment for having the right clothes on um, checking their fitness levels extensively and making sure they haven't got any underlying health issues and also we assess the walking trails and identify any potential hazards and we also identify any emergency procedures or privacy or anything that will get in the way of privacy so how walking mdr works it works in three parts there's a first phases one to three are in the office for the treatment plan history taking trauma assessment and stabilization and then Phases four to eight can be while walking, but if it's a research, so we do for phases four to seven while walking, then phases eight, we come back and we reevaluate in the office and then we can take data from the office. So this is how the standard protocol is adapted. It's cuts from phases four to seven, you activate the trauma as you're walking and you desensitize it and you reprocess it and install positive cognitions. And you also do your closure and revaluation and body scan while you're walking. So walking comes natural. Look at this cute baby. Even babies can do it. They get very excited about walking. So it's a natural human evolution. And we walk for different reasons. We walk as transport, our bodies are transport, it's our first car and we walk for fun and we also walk to clear pain and we also walk just to feel better about ourselves, to think clearly and it's also a biological need to walk because when we're walking it will make our bodies feel better, we get fitter, 
clears our circulation. So walking MDR is suitable for everyone and it can be adapted for everybody irrespective of your walking abilities or disability. And But it's most effective for people who love being outside, who are very physical. It's also good for people who are claustrophobic or even agoraphobic because then it will be exposure therapy. And it's also good for people who are shy or people who struggle, can't make eye contact. And for people who just embody their trauma or who are very physical. So the cognitive benefits of walking, it improves circulation and aids the cognitive function and psychological impairment, as Paulson 2016 said. Moving, when we are having therapy and moving, it's good for us because it increases the fear extinction. So when you are walking, you feel less trapped, so you're less likely to feel trapped or scared. Walking and thinking solves problems. As I've said, walking is an evolutionary thing which enables the sensory and motor pathways to communicate. Walking MDR therapy, as you can see, it combines the added benefits of EMDR, walking in nature, as the following clips because it's very relaxing as you can see here. It also calms people down and it enables people to stay present and just be in the moment. And it's engaging, so it helps clients engage with nature and it also helps them to find a suitable safe space if they are unable to find it because their safe space may be contaminated as this clip will show. And walking MDR also helps clients focus their thoughts and you can use and interact with nature to help clients focus their thoughts. And this is what I call an EMDR wall for my clients because by walking on it, it just helps them to focus and taxes their working memory. And also, as this clip will show you, by just simply crossing a brook, And also, while you're outdoors, you can also test and check clients' capacity to hold dual attention. Because if they can appreciate a beautiful scenery while still in their memory, that shows that they can hold dual attention. Walking MDR is also very calming because it uses nature sound to calm clients down. Notice your thoughts. Walking EMDR also is very soothing as we use nature just to ease clients' anxieties. Nature also can help clients figure things out or get perspective very quickly and like this client she's enjoying the view and whatever was troubling her becomes less significant it's not just enjoyable for the clients but for me as a therapist too i enjoy it so the research that we did the participants were combat veterans and they were unable to access their trauma treatments although they'd had treatment in line with nice guidelines for their trauma but they weren't able to access the right treatments for themselves and that is because of the shame and the stigma of having PTSD and also accessibility of services and also because of the gaps in the treatment services 
and they are not the same. You, they'd be offering EMDR up north, but they don't offer it down south. They give CBT or they just do visitation to check up on them, which, or some of them are given medication, which they find inadequate. So the aim of this research was to find suitable ways to treat combat veterans and encourage them to seek help and also to enable them to access mental health provisions and mainly it was to engage them holistically in treatment. So what then happened is the EMDR was adapted under the supervision of Dr. Derek Farrell and eight combat veterans were treated who had both PTSD and CPTSD. And after the assessments were done, they were each given three days of five hours of walking one-to-one -one EMDR therapy in the local parks where they had chosen them themselves, but they had been assessed. And the parks they chose were just amazingly beautiful. It was incredible, as you can see on the screen, it was a varied scenery and beautiful. And I'll only be able to talk about the first combat veteran because I won't be able to talk about all of them and that we could be here all day. But if you wanted to see the others that I've written about, you can check them out in the handouts and how their processes were helped by walking the MDR. So the first combat veteran, I call him CV1. He felt cursed by his experiences. He joined the army at 26, but prior to that, he had had some traumas as a child. His first trauma, although it scored very low, I think it was a two or three, was when his sister was born. But another significant trauma, which scored really highly, I think it was about a nine, was being bullied by a teacher. And then when he joined the army at 26, he had two, the first two was when he was in Northern Ireland, when he saw a soldier being assassinated by a woman in cold blood right in front of him. And also the second one in Northern Ireland is when he had to pick up the body parts of a soldier that had been blown up by a bomb. But the most distressing memory was of an operation in South America where they had to help the government when there was a threat of a coup from insurgents. So he was lying in ambush in the forest waiting for the insurgents to cross to the capital. And just as he was about to give his men an order to retreat, the insurgents came and then he gave the order that his men should uh, shoot or fire. And what haunts him was just the smell of gunfire. And when he gave the command to stop the bodies, because he said about 200 insurgents had been killed and that haunted him. And the other distressing memory was his friend's death, which was a week after that one, where they were still trying to push back the insurgents from advancing into the capital. So they were in another operation, but they were being assisted by another British troop. But unfortunately, this, somebody gave orders to this troop to pull back. While they pulled back, they exposed his best friend's position, who was the gunner. So the insurgents started firing because they could see where the fire was coming from. And then they shot him. So he ran across and grabbed his friend and dragged him all the way back to safety. But unbeknownst to him, his friend was already dead. So his, so his negative beliefs and cognitions were that he was not good enough. He felt cursed by his experiences. He thought that he was a bad person. And he felt guilty for killing those people because you realise that they had families, they had mothers. And he truly believed that he will die alone because his ability to connect to other people had been disrupted. So he had recurring nightmares about the ambush. He felt powerless and angry with the government. He felt guilty and he believed that he was a murderer. So he avoided people and his relationship suffered because he struggled to intimate. He was hypersensitive and agitated. And he had intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, and he struggled 
so it was about almost 30 40 years when we treated him and in his own words here he talks about his own his experience of walking the MDR I started off thinking this is a waste of time surely what's what's this supposed to achieve but actually as the afternoon wore on I could feel the bad memories disappearing and I have a totally different feeling now to the memories when I had and in the second clip he just talks about the process what, what he felt in his body well on the, at the end of it well, during the walk we stopped and, and you said take note of your body and I could actually feel the tension my hands were red at the time now I've gone back to white fingers because I've got Raynaud's disease, but yes. at the time they were covered in blotches of red, and I could feel the tension just draining from my fingers. I can still, yeah, still like pins and needly feeling now. Mm. Yeah, but it is, it is actually going, and I can't feel anything. The rest of my body. So in the next clip he talks about his shift and his symptoms and how he felt and how walking MDR helped him process his traumas and his positive cognitions. It took all afternoon to get there but actually it's not distressing at all. It's sad that it had to happen. But I can now accept that if you are a young man and you join the infantry, shit happens. And I can feel proud that I had Tony for a, a good mate. I'm proud of him, I'm proud of his grin. I'm proud that I knew him. It's a shame that I couldn't have known him for longer. So as a result of the walking MDR treatment, his SADS decreased, all his memories decreased to a one. And they shifted appropriately, especially the loss of his friend, and shifted to sadness. And he developed a positive cognition that shit happens. His trauma was consolidated within his memory networks and he accepted that if you're a young man and you join the army, you are going to die. So I've got the other two combat veterans, but I won't talk about them, but I'll just share little clips of their experiences of walking and how the shift happened for them. We spoke about Afghan, didn't we? Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't like painful. Yeah. There was a moment, like I said to you when we walked, there was a moment where I got quite tear yeah. and I felt and I smelt like different smells of blood and the, the back of the helicopters and and then all of a sudden it just sort of, my mind was like, it's okay it and it just carried on walking and it, there was other bits, yeah. you know, there was other bits and I thought, oh, what about that, what about that, but it was nothing that made me feel out of control as such. So he speaks about the process for him that actually the memories were not as um, threatening or as scary as he thought they would be. He processed them and he moved on. And the next clip is about of the other veteran where he describes his process and I, for a moment I thought, my God, he knows a lot about the MDR. But how he explains it absolutely captures the process of walking MDR. And EMDI yeah, it's, it's very subtle. Yeah, you it is. You, yeah, you you, th you you think it's just a walk, a bimble and a chat, but you're making me work by saying hold that thought or whatever you words you're saying and like that. Okay, so 
racking my brain to try and drag up a memory. And it's, that's really hard sometimes to do after 20, 30 years. I'm not saying it's gone away totally, but that's how, that's how it works. I'd be saying, I'll, I would be calling myself a liar to say if it's gone 100%. And if anybody tells you it's gone 100%, they're lying. It doesn't quite work that way. How it works is that the, the thoughts are still there, but the distressing feelings are not. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the thoughts are there. It's, um, it's a mechanism. Yes. Uh, and that beautifully captured walking EMDR and how EMDR works. And his partner asked to see me and she wanted to share her experiences and thankfully she was also able to share them on the video where she just expresses how this process felt for her and what she had observed. So, um, and since, since he's been talking to you, he's become more positive. I think I've said to you before, he's so negative a lot of the time and now all of a sudden he's, he's you can see how he's, he's yeah he's looking forward he's, he's talking about the future and, and you know we're talking about like getting married and things like that which is I'll get divorced first yeah but you know I mean it's stuff that we're talking about it's, it's future stuff that we're talking about he's looking forward to the future yeah he's he's, he's calmer in himself we, a couple of times we've been out and he sat like today he's sitting with his back to the window that's really really unusual when I first started seeing him he would have been you know probably where you are back to the wall you know that sort of thing so high percentage yeah very very um, he's got a lot of tells I can tell when he's more anxious um, and I haven't noticed as many of those in the last month I would say maybe so things like um, like plucking hair plucking and things like that. Still bites his nails, but <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> so my own experiences of walking MDI as well reflected in this clip just after walking with another client and how I felt. Um just finished that interview. Um, with CV2, I am aware that I'm feeling moved, I'm feeling touched, I'm feeling more empathic than I normally feel, and feeling happy at the same time and very subtle. I thought, oh, that was a good session, that was a good interaction. Looking forward to it actually, looking doing another one. I'm looking forward to taking somebody else out, taking them walking. So in conclusion, all the veterans that were treated, they had a significant reduction in their symptoms, PTSD symptoms, as you can see. And in this chart, I've only included the three that I wrote, the qualitative um, report on, research on, because I couldn't put all eight in. As you can see, there are symptoms before the treatment were really high, they were over the scale, but during treatment they'd lowered. And they didn't lower as much for the third one because at that time he was going through a divorce and that was agitating and aggravating things and his post-treatment symptoms also went down but not as much as the other two but what then happened for him he started empathizing and realizing actually that his ex was also vicariously traumatized by his experiences of walkers on one particular incident when he was shot at he was on the phone to her and then the phone had to cut off and Obviously, being an army wife, she knew that when communication is shut, it means that they are under attack. So, in conclusion, the research of all the eight, two, they dropped out or only had stabilization. One of them felt that stabilization was enough. He wasn't ready to meet his traumas. The second one, 
he was just cognitively not suitable, so stabilisation was all we can do for him. The other six all reported a significant reduction in their symptoms and they all experienced walking MDR very positively, they enjoyed it and the research was showed that walking MDR is effective and not only is it effective, it showed treatment needs and the different variations that the veterans felt that it's what they needed from a treatment to be effective. So their treatment results were maintained when I checked in after three and six month intervals. And the results of the research indicated that there is a need for further exploration on walking MDR under quality controlled and different mixed methods of analysis and variables. So in conclusion, Parnell and Van der Kock, they capture the essence of walking MDR very, very beautifully, of MDR and walking MDR very, very beautifully. And MDR is about memory. It's about softening and processing memories. These intrusive recollections, these images, physical sensations, sounds that continue to haunt people disappeared and people ended up with the story of a long time ago this happened to me and it was just something that happened without all of the sensory and emotional qualities to it. So how EMDR, to my mind, rather uniquely, in my experience, can transform the nature of the traumatic memories is really the amazing piece of it. So much of what causes problems in the world has to do with desire for revenge. So if you look at what are the roots of so many of the problems, it has to do with childhood trauma, for example, or traumas where somebody's harmed and then they want to harm somebody else. So with the childhood traumas, a child is traumatized and they can become a perpetrator or they can't attach and, and nurture their own children. And so then we end up with other adults who then perpetuate that. Or these revenge cycles where somebody is, you know, has experienced war or something like that and then they want to harm the person who harmed them. And so we have these cycles of revenge. With EMDR, what happens is that you know the, the desire to hurt another person goes away and that the feeling of connection to the perpetrator disappears. You, the dependence on someone changing for you to be okay changes forever. And that encapsulates how the veterans and the clients of Walking MDR actually felt. Their flashbacks became stories and memories that, that happened in the past, but it wasn't happening now. And the desire to be angry and avenge or do something to the government went away. They realised actually they're just people and those ministers have moved on. So they were free from the expectations of the trauma. So the future directions for walking EMDR therapy is very encouraging and therefore the explorations continue and we are now using a larger sample size than mixed methods. We are also using forensic analysis to test for cortisol under CSI lab situations. It's very exciting and we're trying to get them to see if we can also do dopamine but they're saying it's very expensive. We are also testing different walking variable and we are also testing the EMDR variable and also nature and hopefully this will contribute to the growing literature on the effectiveness of EMDR. Thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. As we say on the Camino, Buen Camino.